On Sunday, April 27th, not one, but two popes will be raised to the altar of sainthood. My first guest is the Cardinal Archbishop of Washington, D.C. He recently joined us to give us his thoughts on the upcoming canonizations of Pope John Paul II and John XXIII. He's a member of the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, as well as the Vatican's Congregation for Bishops. Here's my exclusive interview with Cardinal Donald Wuerl. Give me the significance, if you will, of the dual canonizations first, stepping back of John Paul II and John XXIII. When you think of how well the church has been served in recent decades, I think the church has been well served in over the centuries by the popes. But if you wanted to start marking clearly the, the church, the conciliar and post-conciliar church, then the, the bookends are John the 23rd, who called the council into being, really the, the father of the council, mm -hmm. and John Paul II, who implemented the council. And I say that because when he was elected pope, uh, in the conclave when he was elected pope, I had the, the privilege of being present at the mass, the morning after his election, but before he dissolved the conclave. He said in the homily to the cardinals, the, the ministry, my ministry as chief shepherd of the church will be the implementation of the Second Vatican Council. And uh, Raymond, if you look at all of the things that he has written, if you start with his encyclicals, and every one of those post-synodal apostolic mm -hmm. exhortations, and remember, he called those synods into being, yep. you, have, you have the implementation, the documented magisterial implementation of the council. Tell me the lasting impact that John the 23rd has had on you personally, on your ministry, and on the church. I, I think the the thing that I carry away from uh, John the twenty third is not that he called the council, but that he could be, while being pope, he could be an ordinary pastor of souls. Mm. He could be. You saw a priest stand. You saw a happy priest, mm -hmm. a, a cheerful priest. Uh, all those stories about uh, his doing away with so much of the formality. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, to me, that said a great deal. It said, remember, you're studying to be a priest. And a priest's job is to be a joyful messenger of the gospel. And wasn't that what he was? Why is he a saint? In your I, think he's, I, I think John Paul, I think uh, John the 23rd is a saint because he, we talk about heroic virtue. Mm -hmm. I think when you read Journey of a Soul, when you read what he wrote, uh, you, you see a life of heroic virtue. Mm -hmm. He truly tried to mirror in his life the gospel. I think that accounts for the joy. Let's talk about Pope John Paul II. 129 countries visited, left an amazing impact, touched so many of our lives. I mean, he was really the only pope I recall. Um, give me your sense of the most important encyclical that he wrote, and I know you have done exhaustive studies of all of them. Yeah. If I had to pick one, right. uh, Redemptor Hominis, the, the oh. very first, the very first. Now why? Because I believe his entire program for his pontificate is contained in that encyclical. Mm -hmm. He begins by simply reminding us, the faith is all about Jesus, the Redeemer of mankind. And what does that involve? And how does that unfold? And who is touched by all of that? And then you take a look at the rest of his 26 and a half years, mm -hmm. and you see that lived out. You see it articulated in all the other encyclicals, in, in his apostolic exhortations. Remember, he takes on all of the issues. He takes on the questions, first of all, of the church, right. uh, of priesthood, of formation for priesthood, of religious life, of the role of laity in the church, of bishops. And then he takes on the issues, truth, life. Mm -hmm. He takes on the issue of mission, everything that the council talked about. And then his encyclicals that deal with the social justice issues of the church. Mm -hmm. Everything the council talked about, he began to implement 
in light of the lived experience of the post-conciliar church. Tell me about his implementation. There were so many firsts in John Paul II's pontificate. Uh, the, the creation of Divine Mercy Sunday, creating that, that moment, raising Faustina to the altars of the church. Tell me what that said to the church and its lasting mark. Well, I think what he was saying to us, and again, now we're back to that very first encyclical, mm -hmm. that our God sent Jesus Christ, his son, to be our redeemer. It's out of the loving mercy of God manifested in Jesus Christ that we're redeemed. And so Divine Mercy Sunday is just a repetition of that whole, uh, that whole proclamation. And what a beautiful place for it to be the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Sunday. And then during this entire period of solemnity after solemnity, recalling Christ is risen, Christ is truly risen, we say yes, and his mercy makes it possible for me to rise. Why would you say he is a saint and deserves to be? I think there's a, such a compelling reason why those crowds were, were shouting Santo Subito. In, in his life, he demonstrated a love, a love of Christ and a love of Christ's church. But it was in his death, it was in yeah. his dying that we saw the stature of this man. Mm. And we saw the, the love, the sanctity, uh, waiting to go to the Father's house, mm. but waiting for the Father to call him. Yeah. And uh, all of the beauty of his ministry, I think, came to be seen in those last, those last months. That yeah, was really incredible to, to be a part of and to watch it. And to, and to know, and to know this, this is the same person who with all that vitality stepped out onto the Socrato of St. Peter's when he was 58 years old and said, don't be afraid. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Open wide your hearts to Christ. And at the end of his life, what were we seeing? He was saying, I'm not afraid. I've opened my heart to Christ. Mm. I think that's... As painful I, as it was, as difficult as it is. And that's why people, all of us, could say, Santo Suto. John He's, Paul the Great. John Paul the Great. St. John Paul the Great. Mm. Donald Cardinal World, thank you as always. You're very welcome. Good to be with Excellent. you. Excellent.